Hey, what's up, guys? This is the One Year Bible Reading for June 3rd. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day, for all your blessings. May you guide us in this reading, and may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 2 Samuel 20, 14 through 21, 22. And he, Yohab, went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel and Beth, Machah. Excuse me, Maha, and all the Barites. So they were gathered together and also went after Sheba. Then they came and besieged him and Abel of Beth Makkah. And they cast up a siege mound against the city, and it stood by the rampart. And all the people who were with Yoab battered the wall to throw it down. Then a wise woman cried out from the city, Here, here, please say to Yoab, Come nearby, that I may speak with you. When he had come near to her, the woman said, Are you Yoab? He answered, I am. Then she said to him, Hear the words of your maidservant. And he answered, I am listening. So she spoke, saying, they used to talk in former times, saying, They shall surely seek guidance at Abel, and so they would end disputes. I am among the peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Yohab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me, that I should swallow up or destroy. That is not so. But a man from the mountains of Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Betri by name, has raised his hand against the king, against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. So the woman said to Yohab, Watch, his head will be thrown to you over the wall. Then the woman in her wisdom went to all the people, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Betri, and threw it out to Yohab. Then he blew a trumpet, and they withdrew from the city, every man to his tent. So Yohab returned to the king at Jerusalem. And Yohab was over all the army of Israel. Benaniah, the son of Jehodiah, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites. Adoram was in charge of revenue. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, Ahilud, was recorder. Shiva was scribe. Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Ira the Jairite was a chief minister under David. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Gibeonites. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection to them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore David said to Gibeonites, to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And with what shall I make atonement, that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said to him, We will have no silver or gold from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. So he said, Whatever you say, I will do for you. Then they answered the king, As for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the territories of Israel, let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So the king took Armoni and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, 
whom she bore to Saul, and the five sons of Mishael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Mehoth, the Mehethloathite, <laughs> excuse me, and he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the hill before the Lord. So they fell, all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. Now Rizpah, the daughter of Ayah, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock, from the beginning of harvest until the late rains poured on them from heaven. And she did not allow the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And David was told what Rizpah, the daughter of Ayah, the concubine of Saul, had done. Then David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of Jabesh Galid, who had stolen them from the street of Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hung them, after the Philistines had struck down Saul and Gilboa. So he brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from there. And they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged. They buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son in the country of Benjamin and Zelah, in the tomb of Kish his father. So they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God heeded the prayer for the land. When the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David and his servants with, with him went down and fought against the Philistines. And David grew faint. Then Ishbi Benab, who was one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose bronze spear was three hundred shekels, who was bearing a new sword, thought he could kill David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, came to his aid and struck the Philistine and killed him. Just to give you guys... Well, it's my opinion so far. I'm not too sure, but all in the Old Testament, when you hear God commanding his people, the Israelites, to kill women and children and to destroy cities and to not let anything live, I believe he was talking about the giants and their offspring and the ones that the fallen angels you know, came down and you know, laid with the women and had children by them. And I believe this was their offspring. That's why God had to, had to destroy them, had to get rid of them. They were doing all kind of, kind of abominations and who knows what was going on. But, you know, I don't understand everything of our God and who, who would want a God where they completely understand. Our God is... A mysterious God, an amazing, wonderful God. So that's just my understanding of the scriptures. Then the men of David swore to him, saying, You shall go out no more with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. Now it happened afterward that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai, the Hushathite, killed Saph, who was one of the sons of the giant. Again, there was war at Gob with the Philistines, where Alhanan, the son of Jer Oregim, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath, the Geatite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Yet again, there was war at Gath where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number. And he also was born to the giant. So when he defiled Isra defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, killed him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Alright, so today we're starting Acts. 
Before I go ahead and read, let's read a little summary of Acts. All right, guys. Acts. Perhaps a better title is The Acts of the Holy Spirit Through the Church. This story tells how God's people obeyed the Lord's commission to take the gospel to the whole world. Luke wrote it as a companion volume to his gospel, and it describes what Jesus continued to do and teach after he returned to heaven. Peter's ministry dominates the first part of the book, and then Luke focuses on Paul's ministry. These two men had parallel experiences of both trial and ministry. Peter used the keys to open the door of faith to the Jews, the Samaritans, and the Gentiles. Paul took the good news to the Gentiles in the Roman Empire. Acts 1.8 outlines the book. For the gospel went from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. The book of Acts describes a transition from ministry to Jews to ministry to the Gentiles, and explains how the gospel got from Jerusalem to Rome. This book is for every Christian who wants to experience the power of the Holy Spirit and be a witness for Jesus Christ to the end of the earth. Ask God what part He wants you to play in taking the gospel to the whole world, starting right where you are. Lord, what do you want me to do? All right, guys, let's get into it. Acts 1, 1 through 26. The former account I made, O Theolophilus, Theolophius, Theophilus, <laughs> of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself, alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, 
and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days Peter stood up in the midst of the, of the disciples. Altogether the number of names was about a hundred and twenty, and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem. So that field is called, in their own language, Akel Dama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry an apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Psalm 121, 1-8 through eight, A Song of Ascents I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in, from this time forth and even forevermore. Proverbs sixteen eighteen. Pride goes before destruction. Hmm. Do you guys know what month we're in? And a haughty spirit before a fall. May God bless you guys.